program and saturated solution. A saturated solution, as you already know, contains a maximum amount of dissolved solute, contains solid solute, is an equilibrium system. Okay? Rate of dissolving equals rate of recrystallization, and we actually have a formula in mathematics, math, that we can use to calculate this. All right? We can use different things to calculate it. These calculations seem pretty easy. Um, for you when you turn in your homework, some of you didn't show your work, so you couldn't get full credit, unfortunately. Um, you do need to show your work. Okay. Um, solubility product expression for a saturated solution. A gives the ion concentrations at constant temperature. Is expressed as KSP. Does not include the solid, which is constant. Okay, so now let me explain to you a little bit. Let's say, let's say that this KSP value, or let's say the constant was 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6 or something like that. For this, for FeOH, or OH2, okay? And you need to get this, and you'll get all the problems right. So when I look at this, and I break up these ions, this compound, as I did in the ions, we did a net ionic equation. Nothing new here. However, there is a change. You need to tell me how many, this is per ion. And again, some of you are going to get it wrong because now you're not paying attention to the easiest questions you could get on your quiz. Okay, this in my opinion is very easy. So this is per ion. How many total ions do I have here? Three, three. I have one here and I have two here, two hydroxides oh. and one iron. Oh, so when I do this mathematically, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6 is for iron. Now, be, how many ions of hydroxide do I have? Two. So I have to take this number and multiply it by 2, which I saw some of you do not do in your homework. So what's that going to equal? When I plug it in here, it's going to be 2.8. Times 10 to the negative 6, and then I'm going to square that after. You, I, I didn't say ask questions, I'm telling you how to do it. Okay, this is how you do it. Okay, if you have two ions, this is per ion, then whenever you do a KSP, you have to square it after the fact. So that is, just trust me, that's how you do it. All right, very easy there. And we're going to get into more explanation right now. All right, more of it right now. All right, so let's write this KSP expression. I'm going to do this quickly because we're running out of time. F, E, S, a solid. All right, what are my two ions? Who knows? F, E, what? 3 plus. No. What's the charge? 2 plus, what's the charge on sulfide? 2 minus. Okay, so that e KSP is going to be KSP equals Fe2 plus times the concentration of S2 minus. Okay? Next one. Ag2CO3 solid. That's the answer. So that's the answer right there. Both of them. Oh. You got to do both. All right. How many ions of Ag do I have? Uh, What's the charge on Ag? Plus. Yeah. plus. Absolutely. Always positive one, and I have two of them. Plus what? CO3. CO3 with what charge? Minus. Two minus aqueous. My KSP is going to be what? Ag plus, in brackets, squared, perfect, times, there you go, bless you, God bless us everyone. Alright, this guy right here, CaIO, what's CaIO3, what's the name of that? Calcium. Calcium what? I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I
what Anna tries to find every week in a date. All right. Calcium iodate. All right, so here we go. What's the charge on calcium? Charge on calcium. Two plus, folks, two plus. All right, how many iodates do I have? Two and Aaron has zero. All right, so here we go. Oh, snap. All right. So now, since Erin has no date, she has to give me the KSP value. Yep. Perfect. Those are, that's all your work. Okay? That's what you need to do for those. You need to break them down. It's no different than doing net ionic, figure out the charges and so forth. All right, next. Boom. Dealer. Drive. Fly. Eins. All right. Next. So here we go. Copy that into your paper. Copy that into your paper, please. Okay. We have, what's the name of PBSO4? No. Lead. Lead. Sulfate. That has how many total ions? One each. Total of two. We do not have to do anything with our solubility. You don't have to do anything except multiply them together and you get your answer. Okay, so 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth times 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay? You don't have to do anything there. Copy it down, you're good to go. Alright, let's get into one that we have to do. Alright. The first thing I would do is take a look. I have my PBF2 solid. What is the formula going to be? PB? 2 plus aqueous plus? F2. Uh, what is it? F2. 2 F minus. All right, 2 F minus. All right, so now we have our solubility of being 2.6 times 10 to the negative third. So we plug in our KSP. Here's our KSP. PB, 2 plus. F minus squared, and I have my KST. PB is not going to change because there's one ion. Everybody agrees there's one ion. So I have 2.6 times 10 to the negative third. What do I put in the next bracket? I'm going to put it in red. What do you have to do? What did we talk about? Not squaring. Multiply by 2. So that times 2 is what? 5.2 times 10 to the negative third yeah. squared. So make sure you understand that difference. I wanted to make sure that this was on the new notes. Why do you do that? Why do you have to write There's two ions. This number is a solubility per ion. Per ion. Why do you square? The squaring is what you have to do to figure out the final KSP. Well, That's by definition. Why isn't it one F two? And how can we all square the other one? It's because you don't have two. What's that? Why is it? Why you split only one in half? I didn't split it in half. This is in a compound. So it was. It's not, it's an ion. It's not a diatom. It's not by itself. But wouldn't it want to split it to F2? It can't make a gas inside of the solution. This is 7.8. Wait. 10 to the negative 8. So what if it was like 3F? Yes. Yes. 